All right, guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be adding networking into the game. So that way it will be multiplayer. So what we're going to want to change in the program right now is we're going to have two clients open. They're going to connect to a server. And then each client will communicate with the server. That server will do whatever with that information and then send it back to the client. And then this client will send information to the server in which the server will be able to send the class information from this client to this client and vice versa. So first off, we're gonna need some more functions. So I'm gonna define MP format. This is gonna have name and health. This is the enemy's name and the enemy's health. We don't need the players because that information is all global. And probably the most important function for this multiplayer feature is the main multiplayer function. So what we want is the host is going to equal our IP address. And the way you can get this number is by going into here, CMD if you're on Windows, and then type in IP config, and then you can get the number right here. So I'm 192.168.1.237. If you're on Linux, you would use if config and it would give you the same information. And then the port, I'm going to use 7890 just because it's super easy to remember. And then we're going to define a socket that I'm going to call S. And I set that equal to socket dot socket. But first, what we need to do is actually import socket. So now we have the host, we have the port, and then we have the socket object. So we're gonna have this socket connect to the host and the port. And this is gonna be connecting to another socket that we're gonna have in the server file, which is gonna be a totally separate thing. So after we do that, we're gonna print waiting for other player to connect. And then player object is going to be serialized. So that way we'll be able to send it to the server. So when I was first learning this, I kind of figure out how to send player the player object over to the server because it kept giving me an error. And I figured out that you need to serialize it with pickle before you can do that. So that's why we're doing that. And then we're just going to send player object. And then we're going to have an object called enemy, which is going to be whatever information we receive from the server. So this is the buffer length. I always just use 1024 to be safe. And then since the server is going to have to serialize that information, we're going to have to load it with pickle. Then this will be the enemy object. So it'll be the other player's player class. So what I'm going to do for the actual fight is have it run in this while loop. So I'm going to have MP input equal whatever mp format returns enemy name and then enemy dot health so now we need to write the format so what i'm going to do we're going to have the player's name and then versus the enemy's name And since the last tutorial, since I made it like three years ago, I think, I've switched over to Python 3. So that's why some things might look a little different. 
So I have player IG dot name and then name. And then we'll have the player's health. And then on the next line, we'll print the enemy's health. And then after that, we're gonna have a variable called multiplayer input. So the combat system for demonstration purposes is gonna be super basic. The only input there's gonna be is attacking, which is gonna be one. So the only option is gonna be able to do, do this, which is, oops, attack. But if you wanted to add potions or abilities, this is why this variable exists. So this will equal input rather than raw input, because this is Python 3. And then if multiplayer input does not equal one, We'll go back to MP format. Else, we will return multiplayer input. And then what we're gonna do is send multiplayer input. And so this is very important for Python 3, we have to do right here, which is in code. This took me a bit to figure out. And by a bit, I mean a Google search, because in Python 2, this isn't a problem. But input will always return a string. So when we're turning MP input, we're sending a string over to the server, and you can't do that. So you need to encode it. And then you decode it on the server side. So now we have this, probably a good time to start on the server. Do new Python. I'm gonna call this server.py. And in server, I'm gonna import socket import random, import pickle, and then from this file, which is called tut, so that's why I'm doing this, import player, because we're gonna need the player class. So now that we do that, we're gonna wanna change this down here, because since we're importing something from here, if we run this file, It'll go down to the main function and see this and then run the main function, which is what we don't want to do. So what we're going to want to do is this, if name equals main, then run the main function. So what this essentially means is if this file isn't being ran from an import statement, then go to the main function. Otherwise we won't do that. So now we can define the main function for the server. We're gonna need the host and the port. And they're both gonna have the same values as on the client. Then I'm going to click create two global variables called win1, which is going to equal 0, and win2, which is also going to be 0. So this is just kind of my lazy way of figuring out how to tell which player won. 
So this represents player one, this represents player two. One means win, two means loss. So if win one equals one, that means player one won, and vice versa. So I'm going to create the socket. And then since this is the server, we're going to bind these. So we're going to bind the host and the port. And we're doing that in a tuple. So now we're going to be listening for connection. And then connection one and then address one are going to equal s at accept. And then we'll print. I mainly do this so you guys can see what's happening and for debugging purposes. So address one is gonna be the IP address, and this is the connection. And then we'll wait for another connection, and then C2 and address two are gonna equal s.accept. And then we're gonna print connection from the second address. So now we have this set up. I'll have data one equals c1.receive 10.24 player one. And so the data we're receiving is the player class that the client is sending over. Player one is going to equal pickled outloads data one. And then data two and player two are going to be the same thing for the second player that connects. Okay, so what we're essentially doing here is we have both the player classes. We have player one, which is represented by data one, and then player two, which is represented by data two. So in the first connection, we're going to send all the data for player two to player one. So player one has all the information for player two, and we're doing the same thing for player two, with player one. And then we're gonna do the same thing we're doing in the client by running this whole fight in a while statement so we have two data ones data two and data two so one variable that's going to receive the information and then one variable that's going to decode it well they're both the same variable but you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Data one dot decode. Then we do the same thing for player two. And then since this is Python three and we can only send encoded data, we have to decode that because we're receiving coded data. And then going to create a variable or a function called battle that's going to take x and y for simplicity and then we're going to be using global win one and global win two we don't want them to be local so what x and y are are the user's input so if x equals one that means he's going to attack 
So we're gonna have global damage one. And damage one is gonna equal a random integer. And I'm just gonna do player one attack divided by three to player one's attack. And then player two dot health minus equal damage one. I'm going to do the same thing for player two. And after that, if player one's health is less than or equal to zero. then win two will equal one and win one will equal two and then else if player two dot health is less than or equal to zero then win two equals two and win one will equal one so after we receive the data we're gonna run the battle function with data one and data two, which should both equal one. And then health one is gonna equal player one health. Health two is gonna equal player two's health. And then T health one is gonna equal a list of the player's health information that each client will need. So we have health one, health two, and then we have win one, and t health is going to equal pickle dot dumps. Health two, health one, and win two. And the only reason we need to send one win to the other players to see if they've won, then they know they've won. If they haven't, then they've lost. If their health has reached zero. C1.send. I don't call it, I don't put a two at the end of this. And then when this is done, we're gonna close the connections. And then we're gonna close the socket. And then at the end of this, to make this more modular, So hopefully this works. And then to finish this out, so after we send our information, what we're gonna to wanna to do is wait for the other player to respond. And then damage will be that list that we received from the server. This right here. So then damage can equal pickle.loads. And then what we need right here is another function that's going to deal with the damage dealt. So 
x, y, and then name. We'll have two print statements, and they're both going to say whatever damage you took and whatever damage you dealt. So we say you take percent i damage. That's going to be x. You deal percent i damage to the enemy. And that's going to be y and name. And then we'll have this here. So that way the player can look at that information and then enter when they're ready to continue. So it's going to be player ig dot health minus the first index in damage. And then y is going to be enemy health minus damage. And it's going to be the second index. And then the enemy name. Some player ig dot health is going to equal damage zero. Enemy dot health. Damage zero. Damage one. And if damage two does not equal zero, remember, because this is the wind variable right here, multiplayer win enemy dot name s. Else if equals to multiplayer lose. Give me name and S. So I'm going to find those right now. Multiplayer win. Name and the socket so we can close it here, then we'll print, you have defeated name, s.close, and then we'll return to start one. Find M multiplayer lose with the same exact stuff except for losing. You have lost to whatever your opponent's name happens to be. We're gonna close the socket and then return to start one. Back from debugging, when I went to test uh, the client and the server while I was recording it did not work and I could not figure out why turns out in this if statement I left it as an integer rather than a string and another typo I made in here was that instead of damage 2 I wrote damage 1 and there's also another thing I did oh yeah I had enemy.health equals damage 0 instead of damage 1 and I added some pauses on the loss and win. So I'm going to open these up in IDLE. We have two clients and then one server. And we're 
run the server first, then each of the clients. Call one of them test one, the other one test two. One thing I also did, and I'm not sure if I did it while I was debugging and not recording, is I added a sixth option that goes to MP main. So now we have waiting for other player to connect. And then here we have connection from 192.168.1.237 since we're on the same machine. And then the port right there. The same thing here. Boom. The two connections. Now we're in a fight. Our only option is to attack, waiting for the player to respond. And we take 19, deal 34. You take 34, you deal 19. So let's see if we can finish a battle. You have lost a test two. And then you have defeated test one. And it takes you back to the main menu. And then I guess at the end of the multiplayer battles, you could reset your health. But now you should have a working multiplayer game.